Revelation 9. And uh, this morning, uh, and I'll probably repeat this uh, during the main service this morning, but um, this morning I woke up and uh, on any given Sunday, I'm going to wake up and I'm either going to say uh, to myself and I guess to the Lord, uh, Lord, I can't wait to get to church today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, then I'll be honest with you. Some days I wake up and realize it's Sunday morning and I'll go, oh, man, it's Sunday morning. I got it. And ju it's just like Mondays for you. OK, if you work, a, if you if your work week starts on Monday, m today's my Monday. And uh, so some Mondays, Sundays for me, uh, I wake up and I'm going, oh, I don't know. I don't want to go to work today. And um, this morning was different. And maybe it's maybe I felt this way before and just couldn't verbalize it. But this morning it was. Boy, I'm glad it's Sunday because I think I need to be in God's house this morning. Now, I didn't say I got messages to preach or I have to be here to get paid or or anything like that. It's just that I feel today the way some of you might feel from Sunday to Sunday I need to be in God's house this morning. I need to be with God's people this morning. I need God to preach to me this morning. I need God to teach me this morning. And uh, that's kind of how I'm feeling. Don't know why, uh, but that's kind of how I'm feeling this morning. So I would appreciate your prayers uh, in that, that uh, the devil doesn't use that to try to put a snare uh, in, in front of me to stop uh, what it is that uh, we're doing this morning, uh, what it is that I'll be doing this morning. And um, so anyway, just keep me in your prayers this morning. All right. Revelation chapter nine, verse 12. We're trying to understand a little bit about this river Euphrates that he mentions here. And um, there are some uh, videos I remembered on YouTube where people are uh, saying that uh, the river Euphrates, there's a big drought going on over there. There's a, why, they're in the, they live in the desert. Don't you remember seeing Iraq? What do we call that? Operation what storm? Yeah, we didn't say jungle storm. Okay, we didn't say swamp storm. It's desert. Okay, and they're talking about how the river Euphrates is drying up and oh, that's fulfilling Bible prophecy. No, not, 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 not yet. We got a ways to go, but um, they make a big deal about it. And then there's always going to be fake videos put out. And you got to watch out for these things, people. You got to watch out for people faking videos. It is so easy now to manipulate what you see, even by people who are not uh, hired by Hollywood to make that movie magic that we see all the time. Anybody can shoot footage of just about any place in the world, but tell you this is the river Euphrates. And how would you know? You've never been there, okay? So um, I, I'm trying to remember, I vaguely remember uh, somebody saying that the, you, the river was drying up and now we're seeing entrances to caves that we never saw before. And one guy uh, points his camera down inside this uh, empty space between rocks and all of a sudden you hear these evil sounding voices coming out of there and they're saying, oh my goodness, this is a fulfillment of this, the revelation and all that. How in the world did you know, would you know that that's even real? And I'm just telling you people, when God said for us to walk by faith and not by sight, he meant it. Because we're living in a time right now where faking, in fact, that was going to be the main theme, it still probably is, the main theme of this weekend. I call it the fakers. There is fake Christianity everywhere. There are fake miracles. There are fake signs and wonders, lying signs and wonders, fake gifts of the Spirit, fake manifestations, fake everywhere. 
And people accept them as being real. That's because they don't know the Bible. And if you don't know the Bible, if you don't know the rules to play Monopoly, don't play Monopoly. Especially with real money. You will lose your hotels, okay? Because uh, I'll buy them. Anyway, uh, so just, just a little advice given to you there. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. One woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Remember, in this case, it seems like the number six represents the uh, meaning of preparation. And we see that in verse 15. They're bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year. Four things there. Uh, could possibly have something to do with uh, the false gospel, could possibly have something to do with the fact that they are, in the, they are coming out of the spiritual realm and not the physical realm. Which, so when I see um, somebody making a video and they say they're going along the banks of the, of the Euphrates River and they see this little, this little opening up in the, and the, that, a place that was once covered by water and stick the camera down in there and they see eyeballs and they hear these monstrous voices out of there. I don't believe it. I just don't, I just don't buy it. I don't, I don't, I don't I try not to fall for stuff. Especially uh, when, like I said, when we have a Bible that's telling us what the difference, what's real and what's not real. And so he said um, they were prepared for that long to for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. So now last Sunday uh, we touched on this uh, that. The river Euphrates is mentioned in Genesis 2. Now, this is before the flood. And from it, all that I could find out, the Pison River, the Havila River, um, excuse me, uh, the Pison River, Havila is a land, the Gihon River and uh, the Hittikel River uh, are gone. After a worldwide flood, you would have a massive shift in the landscape of the earth, where a river would have been uh, before, probably, probably wouldn't be there after the flood because the land is different. If you've ever read um, Mark Twain's book, Life on the Mississippi, um, I got a copy of it, I downloaded it, and I started reading it. I haven't read all of it, but I started reading it because uh, my dad worked on the river. I like the river. I like Mississippi River. But Mark Twain wrote that back in his day, in the mid-1800s, mid that the Mississippi River changed its course so often that you, you could, it was hard to navigate. You could go down the river and come back up, and then two weeks later, it's a completely different river than what you may have mapped out a month ago because the course of the river would constantly change. Now we have dams and different things like that to try to... Uh, put a halt to that to try to control uh, the, the river itself. Uh, but those things change. But here's the interesting thing is the river Euphrates is the one that was before the flood and it's still here after the flood. So I think it means something. Uh, what does it totally mean? I don't know yet. The fact that it's the fourth river makes me think that it, this is a spiritual or this river exists in a realm that you and I are not part of right now, okay? We're not part of the spiritual realm. Uh, we don't have any control in that. We don't have any, um, oh, what am I trying to say? We, we don't move about in the, in the angelic or the spiritual realm, um, things like that. And we probably wouldn't see it, but I, th I think this is pointing in that direction. Genesis 15, 18, this is the, the river Euphrates marks the boundary. And this is something that if you wanted to study what God gave to Abraham, 
The land of Israel that the, that the nation state of Israel exists in right now is just a fragment of the overall land that God gave to his people Israel. He says, in the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt, which we would assume is the Nile River, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So now, think about this for a minute. What if, what if, um, oh, who's prime minister of, uh, uh, of Israel right now? I like him. Who is he? Uh, Net Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay, this would be something like, something he would try. What if Netanyahu woke up one day and God's spirit moved in him and he, and God's spirit told him, uh, Benjamin, I want you to take and claim the land that I gave to your father, Abram. I want you to take all the land from the eastern bank of the Nile all the way over to the western bank of the Euphrates. I want you to take every square inch of land because that's the land I gave to Abram. That's the land I gave to Isaac. That's the land I gave to Jacob. Would that start, would that start a fight? <laughs> okay, that start a big one, all right? So anyway, let me move on to Jeremiah 46. Turn there. There are some things that we will glean from this one. For sure, for sure. Jeremiah chapter 46. Amen. Verse 6. Hmm. Uh, let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. There it is again in prophecy. River Euphrates seems to be a very significant. Sort of like the Jordan River is. Who is this that cometh up? Listen to this now. Cometh up as a flood whenever... You see something in the Bible that pertains to a flood of waters or a flood or waters rising up. Think of what Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah. God said he wasn't going to flood the earth with water ever again. And he's going to keep that promise. But according to what I can see in scripture, he is going to flood the earth with fire. That much I know. So, who is this, verse 7, that cometh up as a flood? And I, here I think he's talking about the Antichrist. Whose waters are moved as the rivers. Egypt riseth up like a flood. And his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. Not just Palestine, not just the Middle East, but I'm going to cover the earth. Now think about that. Think of the flood of Noah covering the entire earth as a foreshadowing or a prophetic picture of this Antichrist figure who comes up, he rises up like a flood. Where's the beast coming from? Is he coming up out of the desert sand? No, he's coming up out of the sea. Rises up like a flood and he, and he is determined that his waters are going to cover the earth. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring something back into this that I've, that I've taught before. Remember where the water came from. In Genesis chapter 7, it told you two specific places. Number one, the windows of heaven were opened up and the rains came down and the floods came up. Number two, the fountains of the great deep opened up and water rose up from beneath the surface of the earth. And lo and behold, there's, I've got the article in my notes somewhere, uh, just came out this year that geologists have determined that there is more water under the earth 
than there is on the surface of the earth. How many of you don't have a hard time believing that one? Say amen. That's easy for me to believe. Amen. Hey. Do what? Yeah. Goes down there. Um, so anyway, in those two things, in Genesis 7, it's coming down from heaven, the water coming up out of the earth. We go to Revelation, we have beasts coming up out of the heart of the earth. We, Revelation 9, that's where we've been for the last several months. Coming up out of the earth, covering the land as a flood. And then we have angels who are being cast out of heaven, Revelation 12, being ca Revelation 6 uh, also, they're being cast out of heaven and they're falling to the earth, cover the earth as a flood. And again, it's not going to be, God's going to keep his promise. He, it's not going to flood the earth with water. He's going to flood it with evil spirits. They're going to cover the land. Okay? So he says, uh, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots. I want you to remember those two things there. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. This is the day of the Lord God of hosts, the day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall, shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. There's a move. I, I, boy, I don't know if I want to deal with this or not. Because I might deal with this during homecoming there's a movie out right now that is stirring up a lot of controversy y'all know what i'm talking about and it's not i'm not talking about indiana jones okay the voice what is it the voice the sound of freedom and it's about a, a true story about a guy who got into the business of liberating children who had been stolen uh, in probably, and I haven't seen it, but probably in some cases they have been born and bred specifically for this. To be in the uh, child trafficking market. And it is true that a person, especially a child, who is experiencing a time of extreme terror, their body will produce a chemical. Um, and that chemical is probably, well, without a doubt, the most powerful drug that anybody could ever have. Huh? Adrenochrome. When I first, again, when I first heard about this, I thought, ah, I'm not going to buy into that stuff. Because it just sounds so far-fetched. But when you read the Bible, look at what it says here. That his sword shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. Remember Babylon holds a cup and what does she do what's in that cup the wine of fornication and filthiness and with that cup she makes the kings of the earth drunk the, the most powerful people in this world political leaders church leaders What if they got hooked into this drug? Because apparently all it takes is one shot. And it's not, I don't know, I don't know much about it. I don't know if it has a chemical addiction to it. But it would seem to me that the high that you get from it would be so intense that you would give anything to experience that again. 
Okay? All this, again, uh, they hate Jim Caviezel now. They hate Mel Gibson for promoting this. They hate that this movie is out there. They hate it. Okay? And all these stories now are being generated on news outlets to try to prove that the ideas in this movie are fake. They're based on internet conspiracy theories and there's nothing to them. There's nothing to see here. Don't, don't pay any attention to that man behind the curtain. Okay? They want you to just, they want you to go see Indiana Jones and not, the, not this movie. But your Bible just told you right here that the earth was made drunk or these people were made drunk or the sword was made drunk with their blood for the Lord God of hosts hath the sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Now the north country. Can I take a few minutes and explain what I think about the north country? Can I, can I do that? I just, I'm just waiting for somebody to say, Mike, would you move on? No. I no, 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 but I didn't hear him. I know what he said. Look at Ezekiel 1 very quickly. Verse 4. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. Okay. And here's your homework. If you want to do some homework, study the word north. Northern, north. It is the direction that is consistently linked with um, the connection between our world and the spiritual dimension. Okay? It's always the north. Always the north. God has an army in the north. There is a, there is a country in the north. There is a land in the north. Now, geographically, the difference between the North Pole and the South Pole is one thing. That is, the South Pole actually has land underneath the ice. Lots of it. Bigger than, the land mass of Antarctica is bigger than continental United States. But the North Pole has no land mass underneath the ice it's all water there is no land up there there's no land there's no country up there there's nothing but yet consistently you see god referring to the north country the north country the northern army in joel that joel's army in joel 1 and 2 and it's in chapter 3 that you find that god said he's going to give them vengeance over the northern army okay now in this particular case here, the Lord God of hosts hath the sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates, back in Je Jeremiah 46. Well, excuse me, the river Euphrates is not in the north. If, it, if anything, it would be in the east of where Israel is. Iraq is east, okay? But see, that, that adds to this my idea, the way I think. And sometimes the way I think... Uh, weird stuff. But I think that this, this particular river Euphrates is not just any ordinary standard run-of-the-mill river Euphrates. I think it's a higher dimension river Euphrates. It's in the north country, which tells me that it is in the spiritual realm. God here in Ezekiel 1 is coming from the north. A whirlwind, verse 4, came out of the north, a great cloud. And if you just study the north in the, in the scriptures, especially in the book of Jeremiah, especially in the book of Jeremiah, you'll see it, all right? Jeremiah, oh, look here, Jeremiah 51. Just turn there. You just have to go back a few pages if you went to Ezekiel. So if you did what I told you to do, it's easy. If you didn't, now you got to find it. Jeremiah 51. In fact, let me do this. Let me do this. If you don't have a copy of this software, get it. 
I'm going to limit this search to just the book of Jeremiah. So I scratch out these here, these here, and I can have the software look only in the book of Jeremiah for the word north or northern. I'll put Lamentations in there too because Jeremiah wrote both of them. So we have 28 occurrences of the word north. In Jeremiah 1.13 he said there was, there was a seething pot and a face toward the north. And in verse 14 he said out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. In verse 15 for lo I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north. How many families and kingdoms are up at the North Pole? Two. Santa and his elves. Uh, and you, and just, just do this. Just go from verse to verse. And read the verse and then maybe read around it. Walk circumspectly around that verse. Look around what's north and south and east and west of that of that verse and get you some wisdom all right get you some knowledge and understanding now back at the ranch meanwhile back at the ranch so jeremiah watch this now so jeremiah wrote the book all the evil that should remember i asked the question last sunday we know angels are bound in the river euphrates how did they get there who put them who bound them up and put them there. This is what I think. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, Sariah was his, uh, the guy that wrote everything for him, when thou comest to Babylon and shalt see and shalt read all these words, it was his servant, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none should remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it should be or shall be desolate forever. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. So is it possible that in Jeremiah or Sariah, his servant, all the curses against Babylon on whatever it is he wrote it on, whether it was animal skin vellum or whether it was papyrus, is where we get the word paper from, made out of reeds, whatever he wrote it on, he took all the curses against Babylon, wrote them all out, bound them to a stone, and cast them into the river Euphrates. And there they are. So it's... Is it possible that these four angels, that that's how they got there, bound up? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, verse 63. It shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book that, it, that thou shalt bind a stone to it. And if, I, uh, if we go back here, these angels, are they bound? Let's see here. Are they bound? Are they bound? Yes. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Is it possible that when Sariah took this book, wrote the curses on it, bound it to the stone and cast it into the river Euphrates and it sank to the bottom, that those four angels were attached to those and as long as that stone is there, as long as it is bound down there, those angels are not coming out. But God is going to loose those four, and anytime you lose something, let's say that uh, Sterling and Gloria, let's say that, um, um, let's say in England, somebody went through the British line of succession to be king and they found out that your bloodline, your great, 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 your great, great, great grandfather or whatever was the brother to one of the kings of England. So that made you in the royal family and they sent you an invitation to King Charles's coronation. 
And they would send it in this, I mean, there would be a guy that would deliver it out. It would be this royal proclamation rolled up. They would deliver it to you on this pillow and hand it to you. You're not playing along, are you? Monica, do something with him. It's not a pun. I'm not being punny here. He would open the seal and read it. Why would you throw it away before you ever read it? Uh, so now, take your Bibles and turn to Revelation 18. You see, I'm turning my back to you guys. Revelation 18. What happened in Revelation, what happened, excuse me, in Jeremiah 51, almost identical to what happened in Revelation 18. And I'm going to move through this because that bell's going to ring. I'm going to try to beat the bell with this. Revelation 18, 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it in. Is there a, uh, something in the Bible about a millstone? And cast it in the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. The voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and, and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Uh, how many of you believe that I, and this is, this is not hard to believe, but your, your Bible's adding to, uh, what your suspicions are that the wealthy, the most wealthy people in this world do actually have a lot of power and control over what happens in this world. How many of y'all believe that? That's not hard to believe. Okay. The people who have power don't lose it easily. Uh, so anyway, the merch for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for the, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. There, there is the blood again, and that's the blood that people get drunk by now. Uh, yeah. And if you go back up to verse 21, my point was a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. In other words, this angel did a, 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 just about exactly what the uh, what Sariah did in Jeremiah 51. He said he took the curses against Babylon and he took a stone and he cast it down into the water. In Jeremiah 51, it was the river Euphrates. Here it's the sea. But he cast that down. He said, this is how Babylon's going to go down. Now, keeping in line now with this deal about the blood... And the chemical component, adrenochrome, that makes people high. A, a high and a buzz that you would, there ain't no telling how many whiskey bottles you'd have to drink down in order to get buzzed out like this. Watch this now. Matthew eighteen six. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones? which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone. What, what did he say back here? Millstone. What did he say in, Jer in Jeremiah? Okay. Thou shalt bind it to a stone. It would be better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. For doing what? Offending one of those little ones. Listen, people. There is a very powerful network of pedophiles that run most of what goes on in this world. And I believe according to Scripture. Now I believe it. I believe according to Scripture, those people are after blood. Not just in a symbolic way, literally. Literally. It's right there in your Bible. Okay? Well, that's scary. Mm. 
it's going to probably come to a point that just saying stuff like this could get a preacher killed. Father, we ask for your blessings. Father, we ask, God, that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear. That we turn not away, Father, from things, Lord, that we don't want to see because they're too scary or they're too outrageous. Lord, I've learned when it comes to sin in this world, there's nothing too outrageous for men and women to perform when it comes to perversions, when it comes to vile, filthy, disgusting sins. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would protect our children, the families that are in this church and those that are under the protection of this church that are watching online. I pray, dear God, that you would keep them safe. This is a very dark, very evil world. It is probably why the sodomite crowd wants in the elementary schools so bad. Has probably has something to do with it. God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us a, a, a heart full of faith that trusts your word. Especially in these dark last days we live in. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.